Okay. Hello all, it's Hamza Al Shadidi from IRIS, and I want to welcome you to our lunch webinar for the second Iraq, uh, second edition of the Iraq Economic Review. This edition focuses on the Baghdad Erbil budget divide. Before I start with the introductions to introduce our key uh, speakers here, I want to discuss two housekeeping rules. Interpretation will be available in English, Kurdish, and Arabic. So please make sure you choose the channel for your preferred language. To ask questions, please use the Q&A function and you can pose your questions in any language. تحية طيبة للجميع. معكم حمزة الشديدي الباحث في معهد آيرس. أرحب بكم جميعا في جلستنا الافتراضية الخاصة بإطلاق العدد الثاني من نشرة العراق الاقتصادية والذي يدور بشكل رئيسي حول الخلاف بين حكومتي أربيل وبغداد بما يخص الموازنة الاتحادية. قبل أن أقوم بتعريف الضيوف أود التذكير ببعض التفاصيل التقنية المتعلقة بالجلسة. يمكنكم اختيار القناة الصوتية عن طريق قناة الترجمة الصوتية عن طريق الضغط على إيقونة الترجمة واختيار القناة الصوتية المناسبة سواء العربية أو الإنجليزية أو الكردية من الشريط الأسفل للزوم كما يمكنكم طرح الأسئلة عن طريق الضغط على الـ Q&A وكتابة أسئلتكم باللغة اللي تفضلوها أم كاتتان باش بريزان من حمزة الشديدي لأيرس بخير هاتن تان دكم وبيش كش كرديني شابي دوهمي هلسان يمدني أبوري عراق كباس لنا كوكيا كاني بوجا دقات لنيوان حكمتي بغاو هولير بيش دس بيكردن تكاية اقدار بن كبهر سيزماني انجليزي وعربي وكردي دتوانن قوي جرمان بن بوبستيني زماني كردي دست بينين بأيكوني زوي كدا كويتا بشي خواروي شاشي زومي خوتان بوبرسيار كردن دتوانن خزمت وزاري كيواني بكار بينن uh, I'll start with the introductions now we have with us Mr. Ahmad Tabakchali, a senior fellow with IRIS and the lead researcher on the Iraq Economic Review. We also have Dr. Megan Kunelli, non-resident fellow at IRIS. Her research mostly focuses on the legal history of local governments in the Kurdistan region and their place within federal Iraq. We also have Dr. Sarwar Abdullah, a lecturer of political economy at Suleymaniyah University. We'll start with Dr. Uh, Mr. Ahmed Tabakchali, and the first question I want to pose to you, Ahmed, is can you give us a sense of the key drivers of the budgetary conflict between Baghdad and Erbil? What are the realistic solutions here for this conflict? And whether you think the 2021 budget deal could break the impasse between the two parties? Thank you. Well, good afternoon, all, and thank you, Hamza, for the introduction. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be uh, among such wonderful panel, and I look forward to a lively session. I think the uh, the question you've asked really hits at the heart of what we did with the paper and uh, where we are with it. I think the best way to answer it is probably to go over the terms of the agreement and highlight where they differ and where they add value compared to the past. And also, while we do that, we can also get the uh, the answers to the questions that you raised. Well, first things first, the, uh, the current uh, deal in Parliament was reached after a uh, multiple months compromise uh, in Parliament in which the, uh, the terms of the uh, deal between the government of Iraq and the KRG were uh, renegotiated or, or, or amended, uh, uh, more likely. Now, the current deal, by the way, is the genesis of it was um, created in the summer or late summer of 2019 when we had two fresh leaderships on both sides of the government of Iraq as well as the uh, KRG who wanted to have a fresh start. And that's pretty much what, I mean, most of it survived uh, in the thing. So where does it stand, the, the, the current agreement? The current agreement calls uh, on the KRG uh, to produce no less than 460,000 barrels a day. So that's produce, not export, uh, from which, and this really word gets interesting, from which it, uh, it can pay for the uh, oil's production, uh, operation, and transportation, um, and then um, for it to supply no less than 250,000, uh, supply the revenues 
of no less than 250,000 barrels per day to the government of Iraq at Somos prices. Now, I'll explain later on how significant that uh, phrase is uh, once I go over the, uh, the main sector. That's in a way is, is one item. The second part of the deal, which we haven't focused on uh, in the research because really the heart of the, uh, the agreement is to do with oil production. Other items are secondary, but perhaps they're worth uh, mentioning simply to go over some issues that, has, that have arisen since then. So the other uh, uh, item two would be to hand over the uh, non-oil revenues uh, to the government of Iraq. Third is to start the payment mechanisms for the um, uh, outstanding debt to the Trade Bank of Iraq uh, to be paid over a seven month period. These debts are around, um, as of end of 2019, $3.7 billion. Um, and they, 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 they sort of initially uh, um, took place in 2015. After which, after which, so after A, B, C, and D, after which for the government of Iraq to pay the KRG its share of the budget. The current shares after the renegotiation in the budget or after was being lowered in the budget is the equivalent of $7.9 billion uh, at the current exchange rate. Now here is actually something quite important uh, because there's always a lot of talk in the last few weeks over uh, whether or not the government of Iraq has paid the KRG's shares, whether there are technical issues and so forth. Um, part of my um, uh, um, you know, sort of like personal observation is that we here in Iraq, somehow we, um, we never seem to read the details. We always jump to conclusion before we do that. And somehow this habit has rubbed off on some of our international observers. Uh, because basically in a sense, uh, so the, 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 the paper or the, or the budget says, you do A, B, and C, then you get D. However, and that's really where a lot of problems have happened with us in the past. There are no exact mechanisms or they have not been no agreement on mechanisms of how to pay that. Because if you think about it, for the KRG to give the revenues to the government of Iraq of at least 250,000 barrel of oil, to give the, um, uh, the non-oil revenues and then uh, to settle the, the debt and then it would get its share. Meaning, I mean, there's no agreement whether that's monthly, annually, semi-annually, quarterly, or what have you. And the other thing is, how would that work in the sense that you would be uh, without funds until you get paid? Uh, so these are technical issues, which sadly, um, as boring and as, as, as irritating they might be, they're never uh, discussed um, in, uh, in, in, in these kind of things. And they always are missing from, um, from the discussions that ensue afterwards. So, um, you know, there's, uh, the question is, is has this been um, taking place in the last month or so? Uh, I think my answer is that the technicalities have not been sorted out. And effectively, the budget only came into, um, I would imagine, uh, real operation when it was published in the official gazette, which was, I think, early in the second week of April. So second week of April, then you, um, you know, have Ramadan, Eid and so forth. So it's no wonder that not much has happened since then. I think in the next few weeks, we will find out if there have been resolution of that. You know, leaving that technical issue aside, let's go to the uh, main important things. The main takeaways of the, of the deal and where it is quite important for uh, us as a country going forward is that the acknowledgement uh, in the budget that the KRG can pay its uh, IOCs because the, 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 the discussion of payment of the operation, the production, as well as the export of oil tells you pretty much clearly that they acknowledge the uh, payment of the IOCs. Now, this is a crucial element because in the past, uh, the government of Iraq, as well as non-Kurdish politicians, have never accepted the legality of the KRG's oil contract. And that, as we discussed in the paper, that goes back to the different interpretation of the constitution, in particular, whether articles, uh, Article 112 uh, uh, has been, been observed. So it's the first time. There was a brief mention of that in 2013. But those were very different circumstances of that. So it's the first time it's mentioned, which to me, um, it is an incredibly positive step in the right direction uh, because we can build on that. We can build on it in the, in the sense as we um, uh, discuss the implications in that it, it can be, let's say, the basis for a beginning of an agreement of the uh, oil and gas law, which can actually simplify this whole process. So that's an incredibly positive element. 
The other thing which is quite important is the change in the terminology or the change in, in the requirement of the uh, famous 250,000 battles. That 250,000 battles per day was uh, agreed in late uh, 2015, and no, sorry, agreed in late 2014. Um, and it has um, sort of like made its mark every year um, uh, since then. Uh, the current uh, understanding of it or the current phrasing of it is that to hand over the revenues of 250,000 battles. This is very different from the past in which was to hand over 250,000 battles for SOMO uh, to, uh, to, uh, to sell and market. The significance of that is that there is an implicit acceptance of the KRG's control over its whole oil uh, export uh, infrastructure. So basically the pipelines, the agreements, uh, even selling the oil outside, that is a, a fairly important one. What implications it has? First, it ensures the KRG's requirement for it to uh, always maintain a level of independence, of fiscal independence from Baghdad, should things go back to 2014 uh, or 2015 timeframe. The other one, it could have implications on, as we discussed in the paper, on the uh, commitments as a result of the forward oil sales agreement. These stand as of the end of September of last year at something like $4.3 billion. So it's that. Finally, the implicate one of the implications it could have, and it could have to do with Iraq's relationship with Turkey, is over the current um, litigation between the government of Iraq and the government of Turkey over the uh, Iraq-Turkish pipeline agreement. Uh, the Iraq government contends that the uh, Turkish government in allowing the independent exports of the KRG from 20, uh, end of 2013, beginning 2014, but meaningfully from 2015, violates the agreement. Um, so the fact that you acknowledge that, that means we are down the road of maybe re resolving that uh, internally. So these are the positives. Um, the, on the flip side of the positives, they're obviously marked by uh, significant negatives. And I'm just going to be aware of time. I don't want to take too much of uh, the other um, uh, my other colleagues. But I try to go uh, really briefly, but without sacrificing meaning, in the sense that the first issue that we have there, the numbers don't add up for the KRG. Uh, the 7.9 billion. Uh, does not cover its expenditures um, as well as the other things. So according to the numbers I've looked at and, and I've used and using assumptions of a resumption of spending at 2019's levels uh, on both salaries as well as uh, investment and, and goods and services and assuming oil prices, uh, Brent averaging $65 uh, per year, you get something like a $3 billion deficit for the KRG. Um, that's uh, versus the historic deficits of about a billion to a billion and a half, again, uh, my estimates, uh, which suggest that it is difficult for the KRG to um, maintain in the infrastructure without uh, embarking on meaningful cuts, i.e. either raising non-oil revenues significantly more and or addressing the uh, large public sector payroll in which it shares the same illness as the uh, central government in that the budget is skewed the wrong way expenditures are way too rigid, way too high on one aspect uh, uh, at the expense of other ones. So that's one thing that needs to uh, discuss. And by the way, as, as, as we discussed in the paper, uh, without a deal with Baghdad, the deficit at the, at the same uh, assumptions would be something like $4.5 billion. So uh, even though you have a, a $3 billion deficit result, it's far better than a no deal. Um, there was, I think, um, those who follow the oil industry, there was a change uh, announced in the last couple of days to the way that the KRG remunerates the um, IOCs, in which by the, the payment was extended and other terms and so forth, which should suggest that it has begun that work, which means a, a commitment to the implementation of the deal. Um, the other element is the requirement uh, in, the in, in the budget for the KRG to produce 460,000 barrels per day. Um, that means uh, Parliament, because that, that amendment was a result of the negotiations in the Parliament. That means the Parliament is suggesting that the KRG is not bound to, the, uh, to Iraq's uh, commitment uh, to OPEC on terms of production cuts, uh, which is something that, um, you know, I think in, in, in another world, they, they, the, the, the uh, uh, Parliament would not be happy with. And certainly the Ministry of Oil was not happy with that in that it raised objections to that and said uh, pro rata. And by the way, that's a very, very difficult concept because how you decide on the burden sharing um, does not really work pro rata. But let's assume what the Ministry of Oil is saying. It is suggesting that the KRG should produce 330,000 barrels per day 
that is a complete uh, deal breaker because uh, by the time you give 250,000 barrels to, um, or, or the revenues of, two, you're left with a far smaller amount and that won't be enough to cover the expenditures of the IOCs. Uh, the you know, two other things in the end where, in there where it ends is that um, giving the government the 250,000 barrels per day at SOMO's prices, uh, SOMO achieves somewhat higher prices than the KRG does. That means the difference which could be as half as, as as high as half a billion dollars a year, depending on what kind of assumption one makes, um, has to be paid. So that's that's a negative. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the implications on forward oil sales agreement, because forward oil sales basically are uh, a form of borrowing that has to be repaid in oil, which means some part of the production has to be met to satisfy these. Um, but the thing is that that's on one side, and the final thing I discuss is the um, the flip side to it is, is what does it what does the government of Iraq get? Because on the one hand, you look at what the KRG is getting, and the, you have to look at the other side in terms of what the government does. Using the same assumptions we discussed earlier, I'm sort of like you know worked from numbers recently, and it looks to me like for the for giving the KRG 7.9 billion in revenues, the government would get something like 6.1 billion in revenues in uh, and sorry, we get 6.1, so which means a deficit of about 1.8 billion dollars. Add to it, by the way, uh, the last couple of years that the government of Iraq has uh, paid. So in the sense, last year I think the figure is about 2.2 billion dollars, and there was no, um, you know, no compensation in the form of um, oil exports. And the prior year was 2019, the figure was 4.6. Um, 20, uh, sort of 2018, it was, I think, $2.4 billion. So it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it should work both ways. Uh, that ends where, where, where I am, and um, I'll leave my other colleagues to discuss and open to questions after that. Thank you so much, Ahmed, for walking us through these uh, issues. And as you say, the, the analysis for them features in the second edition of the Iraq Economic Review. Uh, my colleagues tell me that some attendees struggled to join the room at the beginning, so they missed the first part of the introduction in English. I just want to remind everyone, interpretation in English, Arabic, and Kurdish is available, and you can use the Q&A if you have questions to uh, any of the speakers. Now I move to uh, you, Megan. And my question is to you, uh, how does this budgetary negotiation process with Baghdad affect internal political dynamics within the Kurdistan region. So we are moving from the federal into the regional now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hamza, and, and thank you to Iris for, for having me on this distinguished panel. Um, it's great to be able to discuss the more granular details of this budget and, and the implications. Um, so yeah, like, like uh, Ahmed said, uh, this budget uh, was held not only as, as sort of a breakthrough for regional federal relations, but also uh, part of the discussion was that it would sort of set things in motion going in the right directions for resolving some of the prolonged political conflicts between the KDP and PUK, which, um, you know, of course, there's a leadership aspect of it, but there's also an economic aspect of it, because uh, as we've seen the budget cuts, uh, the budget suspensions and the resulting economic um, difficulties throughout the past seven years. We've also seen increased competition between the KDP and PUK for local sources of revenues um, to, to shore up those shortfalls um, that have occurred to pay civil servants, to pay clients, so on and so forth. Um, of course, uh, you know, as has already been said, the budget laws is, is uh, worth implementing and uh, the transfers to the region will possibly help resolve or, or at least reduce some of the um, pressure on the region to pay civil servants and uh, and some of these other pressing issues, but there are some things that you know it, it definitely leaves unresolved. And the first thing is, as previously discussed, it doesn't resolve the economic um, uh, crisis that the region has been in for the past seven years. Uh, the Kurdistan region is going to have to, uh, as I'm going to discuss, make budget cuts, continue budget cuts, uh, which is probably going to mean prolonging the 21% cuts to salaries, uh, as well as, um, you know, shoring up revenues from other places. So the pressure to comply with the budget, maximize revenues, and also to reduce spending, to reduce waste as well, corruption um, and bureaucracy, is going to mean the continuation of policies that are politically controversial, such as 
the reform platform that the Kurdistan regional government has implemented over the past year. Um, this effectively increases Council of Ministers oversight over economic activities within the region. And, you know, this isn't really something that's terribly new. Uh, the centralization of, of oversight and spending authority um, has been going on since 2016 when the Council of Ministers uh, sort of re revised the relationship between the central between the regional government and and the provinces within the Kurdistan region, uh, reducing the amount of discretion that that the provinces have to spend and tax and so on and so forth. Um, but this is kind of taken on a politically different tenor uh, in that uh, Mr. Barzani, Prime Minister Mr. Barzani has pledged to eliminate bureaucracy, which means uh, essentially to eliminate entitlements that are uh, that the PUK sees as rightfully its own. So the PUK sees the, these reform policies as biased towards KDP interests. And the KDP does absolutely have control over most um, the most critical aspects of governing in the KRG. It has the premiership, it has the presidency, uh, it is in control of the investment bureau, um, the ministry of municipalities, all these uh, areas that are really important for economic activity are controlled by, uh, by the KDP. So the PUK you know, is very concerned about the KDP increasing uh, oversight over, over local economic activity. And so one of the responses to this, and again, this is, this is not anything terribly new to hear decentralization, the talk of decentralization from the PUK, but it's definitely increased in importance uh, with the oversight and with the centralization of, of control over, over economic policy. Um, so this has become the number one PUK policy. As a matter of fact, there was a uh, PUK official on Rodell yesterday uh, talking about the uh, about the renewed talks about constitution, and the, he said that the PUK's number one demand is going to be increased administrative decentralization. Uh, now, a lot of there's been a lot of talk about decentralization, and there are some people who who believe that this is sort of a bluff, that it's kind of a way to extract demands from the KDP. But I, I think that there are some real, um, you know, on the ground serious implications for this and, and drivers for this. Um, and primary among them is to consolidate control over, uh, over economic activities within Sleimania and uh, Halabja, where the PUK is dominant and resist uh, what the PUK considers as KDP encroachment upon its, uh, upon its traditional zone of influence. So um, the, the PUK recently released a decentralization plan, which in, in addition to some other things like establishing um, Iraqi bank branches within each of the three governorates also uh, has some terms such as, uh, you know, that the provinces can pass their own budget in lieu of a regional budget and things like that. So it's very, uh, the, the PUK is very much concerned with controlling its own economic activities and resisting KDP influence. Um, on the other hand, you know, like I said, th there is this um, real need for the government to uh, to extract revenues from wherever it can, centralize con control over, uh, or, or at least reduce waste, reduce um, you know spending on bureaucracy, reduce spending on um, you know on unneeded uh, on redundant positions within the government, which is sort of endemic to the power sharing system in the KRG. Um, but also to, diver to diversify the economy as well and, and uh, give impetus to new industries and, um, and other things. But, you know, like I said, also with the need to minimize expenses, it's going to mean probably prolonging salary cuts. There's been an expectation that the salary cuts with the, the passage of the federal budget would not continue. Um, I'm not sure how realistic this expectation was, but um, that's what, what it, at least what people expect from their leaders to meet their obligations to people uh, in paying their, their salaries that they're owed. But 
you know, that this is, I don't know if it's going to continue at 21%, which is the current rate. Uh, there's been some talk about reducing the rate of, uh, of the cuts to salaries, but um, this is all to be, uh, I don't, I also don't know if this will be hashed out in the budget negotiations that are ongoing in the Kurdistan regional government right now. Um, as you know, the Kurdistan regional government hasn't passed a budget in seven years. Uh, it's been since 2013. And uh, this is one of the expectations from the budget talks that the Kurdistan region will um, clarify its position, at least on salary cuts. Um, you know, the budget is going to be contentious in part because we don't really know how much money the Kurdistan regional government makes in terms of revenues and how much it spends. Um, so that will make it difficult to to complete the budget process, but also um, it, it will probably be content, contentious in passing in parliament, but, but I don't know if, if the salary cuts will be in the budget. Um, it could be that it continues through an executive decree like it has for the past several years. Um, but this is another point of contention, especially as elections are coming up between the KDP and PUK uh, as Again, you know, salary cuts are likely. They're going to blame each other for, uh, for being responsible for squandering the region's resources and its budget, and so on and so forth. And the PUK actually, back in July, when the when the latest rounds of salary cuts. By the way, th these are not the most. Uh, th these are not the only salary cuts that that people have endured over the past seven years. This is the second round of salary cuts. The first one, I, I think, it was thirty five percent, an average of thirty five percent. It was it was tiered. Uh, to people's salaries. Uh, this is just the most recent round uh, and it started last July. The PUK threatened to withdraw from the government and uh, the leadership council put a lot of pressure on uh, Rewaz Fayek, uh, Dr. Rewaz Fayek, who's the, uh, who's the speaker in parliament to, uh, to not accept the budget cuts uh, and to withdraw from, uh, to withdraw from parliament. Uh, this didn't happen, but this is something that we can see uh, happening um, as you know, the budget talks continue with the leadership council the council putting pressure on uh, its uh, its PUK representatives in the government and also in Parliament to um, push for more favorable uh, push for terms that would be favorable to the PUK's um, you know public image of being for the people, uh, especially in Slaymania. So um, there are all kinds of political. Um, issues that could arise from the budget, not only the budget, but you know, what it means for uh, not only the federal budget, but what it means for the regional budget as well uh, as this goes forward. And also all of this is, uh, like, like Ahmed said, all of this is, is assuming that the budget is actually implemented. And of course the actual implementation of the budget relates to uh, or, or is dependent on these terms uh, that still have not been executed or even clarified between the Kurdistan region and the federal government. Thank you, Megan. Thank you for bringing in regional perspective and Lincoln, uh, you know, complementing our analysis in the review, actually. Um, I will be moving to uh, Kaksarwar. Kaksarwar will give his remarks in Kurdish. So if anyone wants to switch channels, uh, this is the time. Uh, Kaksarwar, after listening to both Ahmed and Megan, mm -hmm. my question you is we often hear that economic diversification is the only way out for the Kurdistan region. They need, there's a need to diversify economy to achieve some kind of financial stability. Do you think this is a realistic way forward, keeping in mind the region's performance in, that, in this aspect in the past? And if yes, how, how can it happen? Um, uh, just one second. Okay. Amaya, but Kurdiksa, sorry, Hamza, Men Amaya, Jim, but English, I can't be it. I got has a good bit when you can have tape gora interpretation. Amaya, but English, I can't be it. Go figure. Yes, it's one. Get on you. Ah, so chop it. Amaya. جابي برسيارة كده بما هو بس هي هي كم إيكونوميك ديفيرسيفيكيشن بلى 
يعني بابي بوتوني من يعني ايكونوميك دايفرسيفيكيشن يعني سولوشن يا كاريا كوتشارا سريتي واقعيه على راسها وزور ولاد هي بم مرحلات يا باريون ودور نروي من زيتي فوما بلاتاني جي سي سي يعني ولاداني كنداو او عمان يعني مسقط او كم صار كل صالي نو شاشه و تا 2020 بلان يعني هو دوي 2020 بلان يعني هي كجبه جي كان تا 2030 سعوديه بلاني هي ل 2030 اويل كم كاتو يعني بش بس بنود كم كاتو تاوكو ل 16 اي بكره بسنا توانيه كل سنه شولات يعني تازه يعني تازه نوبر هم هي يعني اوراد بوتي يعني توشي ام مشكله بوا اما اللي يرد يكشف على يعني ايكونومي دايفرسيفيكيشن سولوشن كي واقعيه بلا ما يبدو مزال بيشتر بيناسي ايكونومي دايفرسيفيكيشن كم مزال كونسيبت كي يعني شي تشمتي دايفرسيفيكيشن يعني شي ايكونومي دايفرسيفيكيشن ايكونومي دايفرسيفيكيشن او هي ك يعني اعتماد لسر نوت كم كيتا ولا يعني لا كونتكستي ولا نوت كان ما نوع اعتماد لسر نوت كم كينا اعتماد شلون لسر نوت كم كينا يعني اوه هيك يمن تراديشنال يعني بشكل تقليدي او بوكاتي خويا ما دايفرسيفيكيشن معنا كل اولاد نوت يا كانا اعتماد معنا كذا سر هر نوت خوي يعني بتروكيميايات واوش ثاني كل نوت يعني مش شتي نوتين يعني وكوبيا تقليدي يعني دايفرسيفيكيشن تقليدي بلا رينبو مودرن دايفرسيفيكيشن لولاد ثاني كندا وكومالي ولاد بتايبتي لولاد تشيلي لامريكا اللاتين كراوا اوش اوه يا ما بيال النون اويل سيكتور يعني يعني بلين هنا سيكتور دز بس برامينا للسيكتور يعني كان نانو تي بي نون اويل سيكتور بيت وهل وها بو بدي هناني نون اويل ريفينيو يعني اراداتي كي نانو تيش بدس بيني لقالها وهل وها بتواني اكسبورتي او شتبقي لقالها يعني يعني مثلا سبون اويل نوت لصدى هشتاي مثلا اكسبورتي كردستان برهمه بيك دهنيت كونتريبيوشن كات بلا بتواني كم كان هو لصدى بنجا لصدى تشيوكو تشيلي مثلا لصالي هاشتاكا يعني لصدى هاشتا بي جي جي دي بي تشيلي هين بو مسبو بلا لصالي لم كوتايانا ل 2016 وحفا كم بو من ل 2019 بو بلا صدى بنجا سي يعني شيء زور باش يكرد يعني بون من الساماني ماسي برهمينا كا يسد هم ولات اللي برهمينا ماسي سلامونا كبنا بانكري ماسيه وعرق واين شراب يعني ولات كي زور زور بنا بانك اللي برهمينا يعني لا قبل مسا تشاربيت شتيكي برهمينا اني مثلا بستودو نوعي اني وبرهمينا واني ريت دعوا بلا مشي لي كردستان زور لبارت ربوا هو كارك شي كردستان نيتواني يعني مثلا لما وي ام شصالي رابردوان نيتواني ام جورا لا دايفرسيفيكيشن بكاد لكردستان وكاركي اويا ككردستان موديل شي ايكونومي غلطي هو شاتو او بيصا بدو العراق كوتو العراق شي كردو لا صالي شاستا كانو حفتا كانو هشتا كانو بوبا رينتير ستيت او مصلحه كبيره الدوله الريعيه بعربي بوبا دولتي كي الريعيو هريم كردستان ريك فولوي او موديل كتو هنا تطبيق كرد ك بوتوني زور بيس كولار كان ما ام ايكونوميا أم موديل الاقتصاد موديل كي غلطة ومشكلة كورد روسا كان جاء من حزك من دسر أم موديل زيادة الجخطم وفكس كمو يكيك لا مشكلة كاني أم موديل أويا كحكمة السيطرة بسر اقتصادة كان وبسر درهميناني نوتة برهميناني نوتة وبسر مشكلة ترين شد أويا أويا الإنكم يعني بارين نوت أكيوتة دس حكمة أو ده بشي أكان ولا كاتا لكم لا موديل كي كوامانيا مثلا موديل النرويج وانيا يعني هم مشتركا بدا سوكم نيم ابو شي ودا باش ينات خلق زيات الكشتيبه السيكتوري برايفت سيكتور بس دوبو دو دوزينا ويجا يكي بلا مشكله عليك دروسيا كات يعني وي كابارينو كي تدا سوكم دابا يا سوشيال كونتراكت يا دروس بيت لنيوان حاولات يعني لنيوان حكومه يعني الزور جار وي كميغان باسي كرت يعني ما بنا بين حكومه بوي بارماماتي ما عاش مال باتي هم شاوري حكومتها يعني اتوان بلم لصدى لصدى هاشتا بروجور شون لصدى هاشتا اكسبورت مان اويل لصدى هاشتا بروجوري مجتمع ليره موظفين وفرمان بران واني يعني مليون يكون دو صدو بنجان فرزياتر لحكومتي هريم ما عاش ولا كذا لكاتك يا بنت 5 مليون يجني يعني بي يعني 5 مليون طب 5 مليون يعني مليون يكون دو صدو هنا ولاتي كيوكو المانيا مليون يكون دو صدنا فرموظفين لكاتي تاع بشتيا 
یعنی ما کیشی کی گوری دولت نه تکنا بتایبتی له هری کوردستان کې اس درز بو یک کی کله ام سوشل کنټراکټ وای کړ دو خلق الله به حکومت الله جو به کوم بریم او لکات کا ابي به پولیټیکل کنټراکټ لنی وانه نه به عقد کی سیاسی تو جو به کبه من منیش او بی کوم بو تو یعنی مثلا وکولی کرینی ولاات يعني بوليتيكال افيليشن من ولا ام بو حكم بو حزبها ولا ام بو كسها كجوبك يا اوبي اما هيك كل مشكله سياسيه كان نو دروسيا كان الملاكنه كبي الا باترونيس سيستم نازل بكوريا في مشكله شيء باترونيس سيستم يعني هو كل يجي لك كلاين دروسا كان مشتري دروسا كان حزبه كان بو خير جاء اما جاء بروجكت وانفراستراكشر وهم او بنيه تحتي واقتصاديه انا كيف تدس حكمت حكمت هاي خويا جيب جيكا باشتين اكزام باشتين نمونه او يا حكومتي هريم كردستان وعراق وبادور نغي ملاتاني كندا وسعودي ومانه يكي كي كلو مشكله ليك اما دروسيا كا اما ديال الاقتصاد دروسيا كا او يا ويك اكاونتابيلتي يعني اكاونتابيلتي نيا لي على مساله ومحاسبه كي راس دروس نيا هو مشكله كواليتي سايز كراون يعني كوا لا برلمان كردستان كوا جوري لا اكتيفيتي هي كابتواني كومبلك حزب بيني يعني مثلا معارضه يجي بقوى دروس بيت كسب بيني مساله ولا برلماني بغاش بيني ما هم حزب كان ريك كون وبرلمان تاني في بغاب يوتيه ما لهم مش كان ريكين بس لا كوربشن ريكين يعني وي وي يعني تنها لغندليا لقال يا كاها بشي يعني اجرينا لا بروا اكاونتابيلتي ضعيفه براسي يكي كي كلو شتانا ان جي او شتانا وبريس هم يكونترول كرا يعني مش تكا لا قال هو مجتمع كواليتي سايز كراو جيرا وكو بابليك سيكتور جو ولا قال هو شا ان جي او بريس يعني هم مش تكا كواليتي سايز كراو كنترول كراو جاء موديل هيك كي كل مشكله كاني او هي مشكله اقتصاديه كاني تريش او هي كم مشكله هيك باسم كان لا قال هو مشكله انا مشكله او هي يعني عمله خوما عمله عراقيه عمله اوانيك اولى ثاني كانوا تفرشوا عمله كان بقوتها العالم يعني هشت بيننا نولات في خوما نو بهرزان دسمانا كي يعني بون منا لهريم كرسان اجر بيتو بنظرك ريكاردو ايش بيت كومباريتيف ادفانتج يا منا هيش برهمنا يعني كواتا بها حبوشتك بيني ندرو يعني يا ما امش تعليك لا بردسي منا هلا قلم يكو بقرا تاوكو حمشتك كما سياري يكو بينا ساسي ونزا زور بيش تقال لناوي لدروي يا من لايران لا تركيا لا سعوديه لا ولا ثاني اسيا لا اولا يعني زور بيش تقال لا ولا لبروي شي هاشتك بيتنا اولاته بهرزان تر اكوي لبروي يم الدولار مان دينار برابر بدولار با اوردر ديالي كراو يعني نرخ حقيقي خوينيا يعني بون من معاوني بانكي مركزي ايوك اجر بيت نرخ راستقيني دينار برابر بدولار ديالي كين ابي دو صوت ال هزار دينار لكات كات ام كوتا يا صوب 6000 هو يعني دو اسبوع بس صوب 5000 يعني في يعني لما ماركتا ديالي ناكل لي انترناشونال ماركتا و عملي خو من با اوردر و با قانون اسفين دي ا انجا دو او سيركي يعني اما يك كلام مشكله ني كم شتانيه تناولات يا مهرجي باري ما يا شتا ترى يعني با با اندايركتلي بنا راست اخوي تركيا و ايران و سعوديه و اولاد ني كشتن يرن بو يا مزور مستفيدين لباركي يا مكوري لي الحكومه و او قاسم جي زياد ركن تاع اما اما قسم من ني اما قسي كابراي جي ايراني شل حفتا كان قسي بو ايران كردو و تشي كاكا يا ما كنوت ما ندوز يوا ايران بولاتي كي زراعي بولا بطما كو ايران بولاتي كي صناعي بولا صناعات الشي اللي نوبرت و ايران يا صحاري الكباركه و ربي باري نوت يا صباركش معناتها تدرو كواتا هريم كردستان باركش يا تدرو بوكريني او كلو بلاني كل تركيا و ايران بغير مباشر لبر او مقابله كاس يكون كل الله والله زور مشكله الله تنانات لروي سياسي و امولات دراسي انا نايا ولي ما هيش برهم بيني بو اكيد يا مش تيك برهم بيني او انت كيانا كي حتشتي انا اللي رصف في بيت تاعي بتي اشتاني كواليتي نزمو تشوف كواليتي كنترول يكون سان زور نزمني وكواليتي زور برزني وكواليتي كي اوروبي يكي كي كلو اشتانا اويا جا امانيكا برايفت سيكتور او برايفت سيكتور اني كدروس من اولا ثاني ك بي ال ان موديل اقتصادي ريعي اويا ك يعني دائما تشاوري اون بدواي فاست بين اوكر تساعتك سريع تساعتك سريع عند دروس بي يعني مثلا مثلا بقول انه مقابلين كاس يكون كروتي يمس سياسات سياسات مليون نرمان هبوا لكردستان بلان لدوي 2030 بده ينظم ينظم 1000 مليون مليون يعني وتم باش ما شلون هم وقع شيء اخو هيز برهمنا يعني انت كذا اشتكى مشكله مشكله كاش تيك السياسيه يعني او يعني مثلا ينظم مليار نرمان هي هو ما اشتكي باشا اجل مليون نرمان مليار نرمان هبي باشا بس لك شو هذا اما انا 
یکی که کل مشکلی آم اقتصاد ریعی دروسی که آویا همیان اعتماد کنن سر گوفمن اکسپندیتا یعنی صرفیاتی حکومت اگر حکومت پاری هو خلق زود دولا منه بی پل مارده یعنی ارز با مصاطع حواره بین پرایبت سیبتره دار خالوی که تیاد دروسی که دو بیس هزار دولاری دیتیه ایا با هشتا هزار دولار یعنی اما خو مقابله ام کردو کی سلای خو مقابله کسی کم کرد میتی خالوی که بولا و تی هشتا هزار دولاری دیت سوار راسی و تو میبایست نیاب دانه باها الله دیا که و تی ولایی با هشتا و پیش هزار دولار یعنی ابی شش هز شصت شصت و پیش هزار دولار بوده پیش این جدول آوا هی نکن اویش تریشی باقیست با یعنی تو بیست هزار دلار کی تری دو دفتر کی کی باقی است؟ اما یکی که لیو کیشانه سر کی خلقی کی زور دولا من بو ارز با مصالح جا ام مشکل آواه زور بی او کمپانی او کرت تایب دانی که ایشتن کنکشن ایشان لگل کس سیاسی کنه هی یعنی با کنکشن با پیوندی لگل کس سیاسی کنه هی یعنی مثلا خلقی کی زور دولا من بو پیدانی سهم با کم با کسی یعنی عقدی کی حکومت ها بو مثلا یانزه کمپانی چی وقت منافسه و بالا دائما بو کمپانی یک کمپانی داره چه هکاره کی چه هکاره کی اوه ام کمپانی کسی کی سیاسی لپشته دی کمپانی و من هی یعنی مثلا اما یکی که لوم مشکلاتی که کرتی تایبتش آبم شو دروس بو لبر اوه سرکین یعنی اما دروس بو ک ک سرکین لیرن با دوین کم بوده و یعنی یعنی جوره یا بس بالا سری جست سو وی کن سیف دی تایم وی کن ریتورن تو دیس ایشوز لاتر بات وی and move on to the questions from the audience now, just to, uh, you know, be but that's time. Agar, agar majara bai, just, I wanted to say, I want to... Min conclusion akam bala basha? Just yeah, one minute. Okay, basha. Yeah. La conclusion alem, yani masala, mishti zor mabu basi kam bada, khawa katna mabu. Awe ka gila conclusion alem, alem economic diversification, mishkilei ki siyasiya, pishwe mishkilei ki aqtsaadi bet. يعني أبيت شنو كأجر بيتو إيكونوميك دايفرسيفيكيشن رو بدات خلقي كي زور لكارتي بشتي وقوازنا وبو كارتي تايبت أو كاتا خلق زور يعني اعتماد ناكا تسر حيزبا كان بو بيدا كرني جو بو اعتماد ناكا تسر حكومات أقوازنا إنجا دوى أبو أم 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 إيكونوميك دايفرسيفيكيشن قازان جي كي كي أوية كا لوبي دروسكات لوبي دروسكات خلق يعني مثلا چون مصلحتي خوان لحكومة بدي بيان فير بن هو ليرن باي دوين دروس بيان یعنی مصلحتی خواهد بد بدی بیان بر شوازی که دموکراسی که اما پلیتیکا ویس که دروس که خطری که سیاسی با جیانی حزب سیاسی کنن با جیانی نظام دیکتاتوری کرد که لولات نوت کنن دروس من دروس کرد با وی زیادتر بر وی که کودتای که سپی اچین یعنی واحد کودتا وی که الله اقلاب الابیض عربی یعنی مثلا گران کاری که زور با آسانی دروس بید اگر بی وقت ولاتانی آسیا وقت ولاتانی یعنی ببی اوی خیلی برایشی لبرو اقتصادی دیفرنسیکشن شتی که گرینگا بالا پیستی با پلیتیکال ویل هی پیستی با ایرادی کی سیاسی هیو زور زور سپاس اولی بود نکام لکاتی زورم. Thank you. Um, I will move to the questions from the audience now, and I have one question that's for both Ahmed and Megan actually. So we can start with this one. The question says, what are the differences in the legal legislative constraints on making cuts to public sector salaries in federal Iraq versus the Kurdistan region? In practice, it would seem that there is more flexibility in the Kurdistan region because the KRG has effectively have done this uh, before, has overridden the law and have made uh, salary cuts. In Baghdad, even though Baghdad has witnessed difficulties, especially last year in, in paying salaries, this has not uh, happened. So, uh, you know, uh, guide us through the nuance here uh, and the legal and the legislative constraints. And we can start with, with Megan and then with Ahmed, if that works. That's fine. Thank hey, you. Um, yeah, this is a really good question. Um, I, I think that's absolutely right that there, uh, well, I, I'm in no position to compare it with, uh, with the federal Iraq. But um, in practice, the Council of Ministers has really overridden the legislature in this regard. Um, there are laws which, um, for example, uh, outline how the government should pay, for example, pensions, uh, salaries, uh, the exact rates, I believe, are more administrative um, in their determination. But um, recently there was, there was a law passed to um, the reform law to reform the way that salaries and pensions are paid as well. But I think ultimately this comes down to the Council of Ministers, um, mainly the Prime Minister, but also with the in consultation with Qabad Talabani, the 
uh, deputy prime minister and uh, you know the, like the ministry of the interior is a big is a big payer of salaries to determine um, you know how cuts should be made if they're needed. Um, the other issue here is that the Curtis Sam region hasn't had a budget in seven years, so there's so there really has been no way to determine you know uh, for the legislature to really reassess these these issues either. Um, so yes, this is heavily driven by the Council of Ministers, by the administrative, um, by the executive branch of the Kurdistan region, rather than the legislature and, and the laws on the books. Thank you so much. Uh, we turn to you, Ahmed. Okay, well, thank you, Megan, and uh, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very good question. However, the phrase is wrong. Uh, using the word public sector cuts are wrong because it implies a change in the um, salary component. It implies uh, maybe firing people and so forth. Uh, so I think that's that's the wrong word because I think what we would be, we, what we, uh, I'm not sure exactly of what is legislative process, but I know our current labor laws are pretty archaic. They're more uh, date back to a socialist era, so it makes it almost impossible to uh, to change that. The, the The correct way to look at it is the question of taxation, uh, of progressive income taxes, um, and some understanding of the things. Now, to be uh, just sort of in a way go back um, uh, to the question itself, is that is it easier in the KRG than it is in uh, sorry in the KRI than it is in federal Iraq? Uh, what you got to remember is that in 2015, when the cuts were announced, they were not cuts; they were almost uh, uh, called as forced savings. Uh, so they were not billed as cuts, but more like savings. And just to be fair, by the way, and and, and maybe to comment on Megan's other earlier thing, yes, it is a third round of cuts, but uh, keep in mind in 2018. The cuts in 2015 were uh, partly reversed, and in 2019, the cuts were completely reversed, at least as far as I can see from statements. Uh, the figures you can see, I mean, like the amount of pay, you can see that from a letter published last year uh, when the uh, KRG discussed some of the implications with the federal government, and it provided a, a, a highlight of its expenditures, uh, mostly high level, but um, that's where, where it is. So I think the, the question we need to look at is not so much as cuts, but uh, to understand where the uh, public sector payroll is. The larger component of the public sector payroll is not the legal thing, i.e. the salary. The larger aspect, according to various studies, are the entitlement and the uh, benefits and allowances, which, depending on which figures you look at, they could constitute anywhere from 30% to 60%, even more of the salary itself. It is that that we need to address, uh, because in, to give you one sense, I'm pretty sure it applies everywhere throughout the country. Um, if you have job A, and you go out and you get a degree in, I don't know, uh, a master's in flower making or something like that, you immediately, uh, your salary gets raised. So, the, you know, our public sector payroll has really um, 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 at, you know, hurt us in more ways than one, but this is one of the ways. So when we need to look at it, we, need, we, we can easily address some of the issues from existing legislation i.e. the current taxes, how we apply them, they, are, they don't require a thing. The difficult part in, in doing that, and I think we all, sometimes we tend to forget that. Uh, we look at the uh, criticism of the public sector payroll, i.e. consumes everything, it, it eats the budget, et cetera, and so forth. And you've heard me say that a million times, maybe not a million, maybe a few thousand times. But what I'm trying to say is that the flip side to it is that the whole economy depends on the public sector payroll spending. And so therefore, any element to address that, by definition, means you almost crush the economy. The private sector cannot, absor cannot absorb the current jobs that we have. The private sector is stunted, it's too small. It can't absorb the young people who are looking for jobs, let alone, I mean, if you look at the KRG, if, you, if we believe the figures of about 1 million employees or the federal government of 3.3 million employees, as it is, they are a large part of the uh, workforce. So if you, if you do any changes to that, they would join those millions looking for jobs in the private sector and can't find them. So the solution is always going to be extremely hard, uh, but not through, let's say, easy um, uh, phraseology of let's do, let's do that. The process has got to take a long time. Um, and we are fortunate right now, at least for the next um, 18 months, in the sense that the uh, outlook for the world economy uh, looks is looking substantially better than it did last year. 
uh, we are looking at a period of 18 months in which the world economy will rebound, which means for us, um, our dependence on oil will save us for a little while. Um, so we need to have a long program of gradually uh, increasing uh, the taxation, increasing the, um, or, or lowering the, uh, the benefits of the public sector payroll, because I mean, I'm, I think I'm going way too much here. Maybe I should uh, be quiet, but the public sector um, has advantages that the private sector does not have from pensions, from easy hours, all the stuff that it comes in there. So, you know, it, I, think we, we, I think it can be done, but it's going to be a multi-year process. And, you know, our curse or our dependence on oil can help us out during that period because, you know, even though oil demand will decline over the years, uh, you know, decarbonization and so forth, we are still one of the lowest cost producers in the world which means we can still compete on price, but obviously that means lower revenues. Um, I think I'll stop there, uh, here. Um, I actually want to continue briefly with you, Ahmed, on something that touches upon what you concluded with. Uh, how will change in oil prices influence the agreement? Let's imagine a scenario where there is a rise in oil prices. Would the KRG benefit? Would Baghdad benefit? That, does that mean the KRG will have to pay more for Baghdad? Uh, well, let's, let's start there. Yes, all prices are, are, are highly influential on that, but there's multiple ways that can play out. So look at it this way. I'm currently assuming an oil price of $65 a barrel for Brent, which is uh, about two or three dollars higher than the average has been so far throughout the year. Now, if you look at it this way, let's say oil prices goes to um, 75 for argument's sake, or average is 75. What does that mean? Well, the 7.9 billion that the KRG gets, that will not change. That will still stay the same. The value of the 250,000 barrels that gives the federal government increases and therefore the benefit of the federal government. But the flip side to it is that the sales of the oil, uh, of the um, uh, production above 250,000. So let's assume, I mean, the, the la latest figures show the KRG uh, exporting something like 470,000 barrels last month. So you're talking another 200, um, let's say 200,000 barrels exported at higher oil prices. It pretty much works the same way. I, the, I mean, I've, I've played with sensitivity analysis on this. It, the oil prices need to either crash um, significantly below 50 or increase meaningfully above 75 in order to change, let's say, the fundamentals of the agreement. Currently, in the current range, it sort of works for both ways. Uh, keep in mind, by the way, if you look at the table that we've included in the, uh, in, in the report, which is um, a Renaissance Capital's figure, and you can see that in 2019, similar oil prices, uh, the KRG had a deficit of about $1.2 billion. But that's after receiving $4.6 billion in um, a, a fund from the central government to cover the salaries and pensions. So it takes a long time for that needle to change other way. I think personally, uh, the current agreement for all the faults it has, has some important issues that um, with, with the presence of goodwill on both parties and with us as, as, as Iraqis, uh, whether we you know sort of uh, to look at this in a completely different way and, and to deal with, 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 with our issues together. Because ultimately what is wrong with both of us, no matter what agreement is made, no matter what figures, the rigidity of our current spending makes us very, very vulnerable. Um, which means any shock witnessed last year, witnessed 2014, uh, 2016, it, it, you know, like most countries get hurt a bit, we just fall on our knees. And that's something that we need to avoid. And it's not going to be, can't be done in the KRG without being done in, 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 in the rest of Iraq and can be done at the federal level without being done at the regional level. It's got to be done, I think, simultaneously and benefit from each other in terms of how it was done in the past. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, I move to you, Megan, and, and probably will, um, you know, merge two questions into one here. Uh, the first one is asking: Let's imagine a scenario where the budget law would want to be implemented, just like it, it did um, in 2019. What would be the political consequences within the Kurdistan region? Keep in mind that this is possibly an election year in Iraq. And the other one is close enough also about the PUKP, uh, KDP dynamic, is asking, what do you make of discussions and attempts to transform uh, Soleimani into a new federal region? Is it something that the UK realistically could, uh, could do or um, to put more pressure on the KDP uh, and you know, the, against the KTP centralization efforts? So both on political dynamics within the Kurdistan region and the floor is yours. 
Uh, well, these are great questions. Uh, and I think, yes, the pressure on the parties to implement the budget during an election year is really high, um, especially because of uh, of the salary cuts and the issue of, of the salary cuts. Now, I mean, if the budget isn't implemented, I can see, because both parties really have a burden here, um, the PUK has typically blamed the PDK for not following through on its end of the bargain by um, you know, submitting the necessary quantity of, of oil or the value thereof to, to the federal government in exchange for the full share of the budget. But on the other hand, the PUK, um, you know, has been under scrutiny for, um, you know, smuggling uh, at uh, border points of entry, um, especially, and, and this is one of the things that the PUK has sort of, um, you know, is sort of uh, not terribly thrilled with is, is some of these recent reports from parliament and the government uh, naming the checkpoints and or, or the border crossing points in its zone of influence as you know the most corrupt. Um, so I can see a scenario playing out where the KDP blames the PUK for failing to open its books on the borders and I can see a scenario where the PUK blames the KDP for failing to um, submit the necessary quantities of oil or dragging its feet or so on and so forth. I mean it's it's easy to it's easy to see this in an election. Um, the two parties blaming one another for um, failing or defaulting on the agreement. Uh, now, with regards to um, the regionalization of Suleimania, there has been a campaign um, to regionalize Suleimania. Uh, it was, it, there was a council um, established by, um, uh, by somebody who's, who's long been a campaigner for this in Goran, uh, but it's, it's allegedly backed by the KDP Leadership Council um, and has been given a lot of airtime. And it recently submitted a request for the um, Independent High Electoral Commission to review the uh, petition for a uh, referendum on regionalization of Soleimani. Um, the IHEC will possibly review this and then give a response as to whether or not it's legal. There are some issues with this. First of all, the constitution doesn't have a process for um, separating, for you know, dissolving a region. Um, so this is one thing that, that this runs into. But the other thing is, I, I don't know if it's really serious. Um, this, this, it, campaign in particular seems to me like it's a, um, like it's kind of a bluff. It, this is, uh, this is not something that the KD or, or the PUK would really want to, to do, to create its own region. It, it, first of all, it would be politically, um, I, I think it would be um, politically disastrous in, in so far as it would dissolve the region that took so many years to build and um, you know, it was a, of course, a major victory in the Kurdish national project, but also what does the PUK get out of this and what does it have to give for this as well? And I, I think ultimately uh, the PUK has an interest in being part of a region, uh, sharing power with the, KD, with the KDP in a government, which it's getting, um, you know, uh, at least a, a portion of the posts and salaries and so on and so forth. Um, but at the same time, I think that there is a real push for decentralization and more autonomy uh, within Sleimania, more, I should say, discretion for Sleimania to manage its own affairs. But I don't see this as really, uh, this regionalization push as being that serious. Um, thank you so much, Megan. Uh, Dr. Sarwar, um, we have a budget deal uh, now between Baghdad and Erbil. Uh, has explained that it's much better than not having a deal. Let's focus on a very specific sector of the diversification. Let's focus on agriculture. Let's say if the budget deal between Baghdad and Erbil is implemented, do you think this would push the KRG towards focusing at least on supporting one sector, agriculture here in the Kurdistan region? Does the agricultural sector has potential and how? Uh, this is my answer to you, and we'll also be taking your uh, closing remarks, and, and then we'll move to take closing remarks from Megan and Ahmed as well. So, both in one. Zor spas bo persiara kad, o persiara ki gringa. 
بلام یما ابل بیرمان نچر که هرمی کردستان لسالی دو هزار سیاه تا و کو دو هزار چهارده پاره کی زور باشی لب قاور گرفت و هندی کس آلن هفته میلیار هندی کش آلن صد و شتیم میلیار بلام هرچنی به زور زور بود یعنی پاره کس زور زور بود بشه اوشی کردو که هرمی کردستان بکرد با یعنی سرچاوی اوی که خود و تو کش تو کار یا خود پیش سازی یا خود توریسم درو گشپی بدرد. بله من داخل هیچ کاری ام لو استانی که اس حالیا و او پارشی کلا بغاید و کوت میلیونی کو دو صد هزار بچه خورمان هی. چون باشی آواه که چون باشی آواه دی که عرستی عرستی کرتی یعنی عرستی کرت کانی کی کی کرت نان و تیر داد. مشکل کلیاره در سیستم که او تم یعنی هری بی کردستان ابی یکش تو کلیاره. یعنی اوی که من در مبسما مبسما اوی که هانی و برهنی بیانی بان که خوب تو آنام نیه و پارکا او پارکه ایل نو تو و کو دکتر احمد و تی تنها بشه هینا که بشه سالاریه که بشه معاش و اشتانا که ابی اعتماد که نسر اوی اینفستری بیانی یعنی او کسانی که مستثمرن لدروین یعنی اوی که بیالان یک پنجره وجود داره آم همو پنجره واز لبینین آم همو بیروکراسی که میگانیش باشی کرد وازی لبینین او اشتانه رجل به فورین دایرکت اینفستمنت بگید و بر هنی بیانی به ایش مام باب کرد چی سب یعنی یک جلو اشتانه که هر یک لکل سانه مشکلیه که ریسیارچ اند دیوپلمپ منیه زن چی سب ترک ایش کرد یا ما ایشی لسر کن آیا کشتکاله صنعت چی جور صنعت یا چی جور کشتکاله و چی جور توریسم برایی یا ما ایشی لسر کن یه سحالیا فرق گروپ خریده لدوكان دوكان ليك دروسكات يعني شنك زور سياحي وانا واما اقر بتواني منافسة ام دولو باريخو ما بكا تركيا و ايران و ولاتاني كان داوكا و خلطيش دوات شحسكا يعني اوي كمل ليرا ما بس مل ليرا هر سيكتر يك بارب يبين نابي اما اعتماد كان سبب يقلن امپورت امپورت سبستيتوشن اندستيراليزيشن يعني نابي اوي كا جيغي واردات بقريات اوا بلكو ابيت اكسپورت اورينت استراتيجي هبت يعني او صناعة محليش او صناعتي كلنا محلة دروسيقين يعني ابيت تواناي هبت زين چي سيكتر يك اشاكا بوي بو دروي بنيارين يعني شوني نوت بقريات اوا مثلا بتواني بیست به لصدا بیست لصدا پانزده لصدا ده بتوان کمترش یعنی شتی لگل لگل نوتا اوش دانه بیاری نداره و اما یکی که لوش دانه اینجا دو اول سر که کمپیتیشن پالاسیش تر است بیاد یعنی آویا که لرنی باید دوی نیزوره بیاد آویا که جناب و اسکل بله آوا با نوت نابی و با رکوت لگل عراق نابیت تصور کم تنها تا که چهار سر آویا اما رکوت کی نوا بو فورین دایرکت اینفستمن یعنی او کسانی که لد در ویان و برهنانه کن اما اش بوا بیت که اما بتوانی دیومن کپیتالش بر پی بین یعنی سامانی خلق مروی که من نالم هری میکروسان صور خراب هری میکروسان باشو لاستی کی باشه بلام ابیت زانی که زانکو کانی اما معاهده کانی اما لرن اوت کمی ان صور کنه یعنی او سکیل یعنی نیا که کمپانی عالمی کان اهن و بین لر ایش کن بو پاش تو ایش نسر هیومن کپیتال کین و جوری بلا هیچ من هبیت یعنی فلکسیبل ورک فورسیش من هبیت یعنی سبارت بوی که یعنی بتوانی خلق پروانه کن و بو بازار یعنی کمال معاهد روز بکلا کل سنه خلق پروانه کن بو بازار بو اوی بتوانی سکیل هم خود سکیل خوان زیاد کن بتوان او او معاملاتی که دروس کل لیره بته بته لبوای پیش سازیه بتوانن او کسانا جو بیان بود درسو دکتر و احمد باسی کرد یعنی چند سال چند سالی که که یک دنیا خلق تخرج گالا سخت کی زور نصر حکومت دروس و ایمان له کی شنن بیت خو هم له پبلیک سیکتور شنن نه بیت الا ابی کوم بالی پرایوت سیکتور با و دروس کین و بتوانن یعنی مثلا هزارها جو دروس کن بو خلق زور سپاس تانکی دکتر سروش احمد کنایتک یور کلوزینگ ریمارکس uh, by all means, um, well, I think the positive aspects of the uh, of the deal um, are a breakthrough. Uh, there are different, you know, there, there are the breakthrough at levels that we haven't seen the last few years. We should build upon that, uh, in the sense that we should find a common agreement on the nature of the constitution itself and agree on an uh, oil and gas law because we cannot be held hostage to this annual trauma. Of the budget uh, process. I mean, every year we go through this, and I think uh, you know, was it Einstein who said, like, you know, sort of madness is doing the same thing, repeat, expecting a different thing, because the current structure that we have in our budget means everything has been hard fought, 
uh, for the last few months will be renegotiated again next year and might very well be different. That always would hold us back. And the thing is we need to get that because if we don't resolve it, uh, the issue for us, uh, diversification for us is not a luxury. It's more of an existential issue. Uh, we are a young country. We are a very fast growing country. We are not like our neighbors. We are growing more like sub-Saharan African countries than the Middle East. So we are a population of 40 million this year. Um, estimates are we'll be easily to 50 million uh, in, in, in 2030. Um, oil prices are not going to be substantially higher than what they are right now, which means the same money cannot satisfy uh, what we have. So it's not a luxury. Uh, for us to diversify. It's a necessity. Um, so we have enough of a breakthrough that we can build upon, but we should not waste time uh, over the technicalities of this, that, and so forth. You were right, I was right. You know, the usual process of what we do always in Iraq, uh, attack each other and, and, and lay blame uh, without uh, arriving at solutions. But um, I think with that, I would uh, end my piece and leave it to Megan to, uh, to end. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Megan, uh, we will end with you, I think. Uh, thank you again uh, for having me on the panel. And um, yeah, for closing remarks, I um, just want to reiterate the fact that, uh, you know, of course, the budget, while it's a welcome development, it is not a, um, it's, it's not a panacea. It's not the thing that is going to resolve the Kurdistan region's uh, budget crisis, its financial crisis, or its political um, conflicts either between Baghdad or the Kurdistan region or within the Kurdistan region as well. Um, the implementation uh, or non-implementation of the budget will also have serious consequences for the region. Um, I forget who it was that I uh, saw recently said that, you know, this is, this is one of uh, the most important budgets that we've, we've come to an agreement on because we don't get better terms than this. And it, it you know, the, the Kurdistan region is on uh, is under an enormous amount of pressure to implement it because uh, this is one of the best deals it can get. Um, you know, at the same time, uh, keeping that in mind, reform at the regional level is necessary in order to get the benefits of this budget for not only for the parties that negotiated the deal, but also for the people of the Kurdistan region. Um, there will be uh, a need to drastically cut uh, expenditures and increase revenues. But the way that this is being done through the reform platform that this government is pursuing is being perceived and uh, rightly or wrongly as being very uh, partisan uh, as everything tends to have that sort of um, tenor in the Kurdistan region. Uh, and there needs to be a, um, there needs to be along with, it's, it's not just with the reform platform, it's with everything else that is going on around it as well, such as, you know, the, the, establishment of an assay space, again, in Zini Warte, and, um, you know, increasing um, uh, tensions as far as, you know, military deployments and, uh, you know, kidnappings and, um, you know, election uh, competition between these two parties. So this is the, the, the competition needs to be reduced on the economic front as well, if it's going to be reduced elsewhere. And this is where um, there needs to be some reconciliation between the two parties in order to calm things down a little bit. Um, and I think uh, I'll, I'll leave it with that and give it over to Dr. Sarwar. Uh, thank you so much. Do you have any closing remarks, Dr. Sarwar, or are we uh, good? Hello, I get a bit of a question, Dr. Ahmed, I'm Zahman Nabiya. Okay. I think Labujaka. يعني مثلا ريكورد ولا سريع او هيك حكومه العراق ابيت بيت اوديتي ارشان صالك على 2004 و 2006 وتاكو استا يعني تصوره كمان كشيء سياسي بيت يعني امام وبار صرف كراو هيك جاري واي ديكومنت يعني براسي شلون صرف كراو شلون كراو ايا تصوري دكتور بتصوري احمد او كشيء دروزنا كشيء سياسي كحزب سياسي كان وبتايبتي او مثلا اي مثلا بارفا في الرودان واشلان دروس ولا صالاني ترى يعني خلقي في سور تعين بو يعني مثلا اولياتي نبو آه يعني باري في سور دراو يعني مثلا يحسب من جمله تشندين بروجه دروس كراو بناوي بو خلق بلام حزبي تاعي بناك حزبي تاعي آه مانك يا شدروس ناكن يعني حزب حزب كان بتاعتي بارتي بيتي ناكسن لوي 
یعنی مثلا کشه دروس که با ریکارد نکه Shall I answer that, Hamza? Yeah, please, please go okay. ahead. Okay. Well, I think the the, uh, the the second part is the easiest part, the ghost employees. I think um, uh, Iraq at all its levels, at the regional level, as well as at the governance level, as well as any level is fully guilty of that. I think that is, is something there. Uh, I think one of the... Uh, one of the main dangers, one of the main issues with uh, with with, uh, with with the budget, is that the phrase that you asked me, basically the uh, you know the the settlement, that that phrase in the budget, i.e., I think eleven, the first item um, in eleven, that has appeared in every budget uh, from I think the first budget I read, all two thousand and six, all the way till now, and I think both parties take that as I don't know. It's some sort of like, uh, you know, you carry a talisman to repeat that we will sit down and settle, but every year and nothing happens in that, in that, in, in, in that part. So, yes, I think ultimately we need, definitely what we need to have is we need to have a, a, a settlement over the whole issues that's outstanding, that's outstanding between the both parties, i.e. what's due to each side and so forth. But that needs to be audited. That needs to be um, a million things that... Um, I think that's why it appears in every year, but it's almost one of those things like it's meant to be ignored. Um, so, but do we need to have it? Absolutely. Uh, I think, is it urgent right now? Given the current uh, issues that we have, um, it's just, it just seems to be almost um, an exercise in folly to go back over the, uh, what went wrong the last 17 years and try to fix it. Because if you read the item, it says, agree on settling everything from 20, 2004 all the way to, um, you know, 2020, God help us. I mean, that will take us, I don't know how many hundreds of years to, uh, to work on. We have far larger problems right now uh, that we need. I mean, I honestly think we need to leave a lot of things um, as is because it's just, they're not going to be resolved right now. And there is no way they can be resolved. And they all they'll do is that they'll get a lot of issues out. But all, coming back to your thing, we definitely need to address the issue of our uh, structural imbalances, but knowing that the adjustments will hurt the very economy. So it's almost like you cure the patient by trying to kill it. That does not work. So we need to find a way. Um, and it's going to be slow. It's going to be painful. But it has to be done. Um, we have always been like the ostrich. Uh, in Iraq, we've always avoided it all the time, um, and I don't think we can. I mean, you know, we've, we've always been helped by recovering oil prices, and um, but if we look at the numbers, they're recovering to lower levels. They're not staying high at any one time, and when we sink, we are sinking lower every time. So we need to do that. I think. Um, once again, thank you all. I appreciate the last question. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, thank you, Sarwar, and thank you, Megan. We will end here. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that you can find the, Iraq, the second edition of the Iraq Economic Review now on our IRIS website in English, Arabic, and Kurdish, in addition to all our reports and previous uh, webinars. I also want to, uh, to thank Mr. Haram and Mr. Jamil for their hard work on the interpretation, and my colleagues and IRIS for their support. Um, 